You've experienced the Elder Scrolls series in your own way, but want to learn more about its story. Well, to get to the heart of the story, you have to go back to the beginning. tell you a story. And no, I don't have to go back to the beginning. I don't have to. I'm a prince, and a prince does what he wants. <laughs> oh, it, and I want you to listen closely. Unless, of course, you'd rather I knit your entrails into a lovely sweater, a festive, colorful, blood-soaked sweater made of your own innards. Oh, lovely, perfect for a party. Oh, you'd be the envy of disemboweled bodies everywhere. What my liege means to say is, he has decided to recount his tale to you, and will be most displeased should you choose not to give him your undivided attention. That's what I meant. Thank you. Yes, my lord, I live to serve. In the interest of moving things along, as some of you may be rather limited, I will assume responsibility for the duration of this story. My name is Haskell. I am Chamberlain to the Daedric Lord Shigorath, the Mad God, the Gentleman with a Cane, and the Prince of Madness, he whose sphere is insanity, and motives are known to him and him alone, supposedly. The tale of how Shigorath came to be lies in the story of another Daedric Lord, Jigalag, the Prince of Order and Logic. Oh, Jigalag! Are you actually talking about him now? Boring! <laughs> That's right, another boar. He'd have been oh so much more interesting if he actually had udders, with horns, and then cloven hooves like, you know, any other boar. Also, a little curly tail. Oh, that would be adorable. <clears throat> yes, as I was saying. Because of his sphere of influence, Jigalag was the fundamental master of deductive reasoning and is rumored to have known everything that has ever happened and everything that will ever occur. For Jigalag, Never was there any doubt or uncertainty, only facts, only truth. So great and so boundless was his might, that it is said he was feared and even hated by the other Daedric lords. In their mutual resentment, the Daedric princes banded together and soundly defeated Jigalag. But even while he lay broken and vanquished, they were not yet done. The Daedric lords placed a curse on the Prince of Order the most terrible fate they could dream up for a prince who had embodied the highest peaks of judgment and rationale. Jigalag was damned to live on as the personification of the deepest depths of insanity. Where once there had stood the essence of reason, inescapable logic, and the limitless reaches of systematic deduction, there was now only gibbering lunacy and the feverish visions of the hopelessly deranged. In their fervor to destroy one god, the princes had inadvertently created another. And thus was born the Lord of the Never There, Shegorath, the Daedric Prince of Madness. Shegorath's plane of oblivion is called the Shivering Isles, and like the madness it embodies, it is a realm divided. The Land of Mania is a vivid and intensely colorful region where the denizens are given to bouts of great imagination and creativity. Meanwhile, haughty servants of Shegorath, known as Golden Saints, maintain what laughably passes as peace and civility. They also enforce Lord Shegorath's policies and directives. This means you troublesome adventurers can't meander lawlessly in our realm as you are so inclined on doing. While the residents of Mania boast great inspiration and relish in the imperceptible spark that drives them to create and to conceive, they are still quite irredeemably mad. Like the Mad God himself, they are most unpredictable and, as such, extremely dangerous. 
The land of dementia represents the dark, unseen side of madness, where psychopathy and paranoia reign supreme even while hidden away from all eyes. The denizens are gloomy, fearful, and trustful of no one. It is a place of shadows and pain, where surprisingly patient dark seducers preserve proper peace. Between the two realms lies the palace of Shegorath at Nusheath, the seat of my lord's authority. It is here that I personally am most comfortable. The outer realms are inhospitable to say nothing of that dreadful fringe. This, this is the Shivering Isles. Ah, the Shivering Isles. Home sweet home. Just the most interesting of locales. You know, a true inspiration for those with eyes to see. Hmm. And even eyes that have been sucked right out of their sockets. <laughs> now, as long as they're attached to you, you can still enjoy the view. And what a view it is. From execution point, you can see the rest of your life. The rest of your life! Oh, there's a concept. You know, your mortals and your lifespans. I get so bored living forever. And without your finite lives to fiddle with, why, oh, I shudder to think of the dullness. It's so good to know that when the monotony of eternal life grows insufferably dull, I have you short-lived lot to spice things up. <laughs> oh, I toss an artifact or two onto the martial realm, and the hilarity begins. Oh, you insects are so quick to start hurting each other, even your adoring fans. Oh, ha, him. They say I'm mad. As my lord implies, the artifacts of Sheogorath are as uniquely distinctive as he is, and most are intended to bring sport and amusement to the Prince of Madness. The fork of Horopolation appears to be a mundane iron fork and tends to function as one, but when used as a weapon, which Sheogorath appears to enjoy forcing mortals to do, it will stunt a user's magical abilities or drain them completely. As one would expect, this can pose a danger of the highest order, and it brings no end of delight to my lord. <laughs> a most brilliant comedic masterpiece indeed, my liege. But with your indulgence, I shall endeavor to continue despite my helplessness in the face of your monumental wit, sir. The Staff of Everscamp is another of Sheogorath's artifacts that appears to serve no purpose other than to torment whoever holds it. Once the engraved inscription on the staff is read aloud, four scamps appear, and while the creatures are not harmful, they smell as horrendously as all other scamps. Shegorath laughs mightily as the beasts proceed to make a complete shambles of the better's life. <laughs> <sighs> Among my lord Shegorath's most notorious artifacts is the staff known only as Wobbajack. Oh, you like that, don't you? Oh, you mortals. You don't shut up about it. Wabba jack this, wabba jack that. Wabba 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 jack. Ah, I'll turn the next one to pick it up into mammoth cheese. Oh, lovely. And then I'll feed it to Haskell when he start looking. I shudder at the thought, my lord. Uh, to continue, the wabba jack has extremely unpredictable effects, making it essentially useless for the adventurer who likes to know what spell they are casting before they cast it. While the staff can be useful, should it turn an opponent into a mud crab, it is equally capable of turning a troublesome imp into a soul-hungry lich. Or worse, the outcomes are utterly random and, of course, completely uncontrollable, as is my lord. Of course, there are other artifacts attributed to the Prince of Madness, but I grow tired of reciting stories for a mortal mind clearly unable to contain them all so I'll simply tell you of the Mad God's most crucial artifact, the Staff of Shegorath. This unusual cane functions as the very core of the Shivering Isles. While it can be seen as a simple walking stick, albeit with an eyeball at the top, the staff is vitally important, for it is necessary for Shegorath himself to sit upon the throne of madness. And it is with this artifact that the tale of my lord reaches its climax. There is a time, you see, when the staff of Sheogorath becomes just a useless piece of wood. It is during the time of the Grey March. When the Daedric Lords cursed Jigalag to live as Sheogorath, they also decreed that once an era he should return to destroy all that the Mad God had created in his time. The Shivering Isles are torn asunder by the forces of order, 
and those who betray Sheagorath in favor of embracing Jigalag's logic are reborn as priests of order. This terrible cycle has continued for millennia and will come again. At some point the Grey March must return, Jigalag will rise, and how Lord Sheagorath will choose to approach this threat is his alone to know. Thus ends the tale of my liege. Wherever he leads, I will stand at his side, for I am Haskell, the Chamberlain of the Great Mad God. It is who I am, and all I shall ever be. Now please, I have duties to which I must attend, rather more important than talking with the likes of you, I'm sure. The Grey March is at hand, after all. Yes, let the Grey March come. I'll be me before he is me, and then I'll be me again. It'll always exist, because madness will always exist. <laughs> Even if I'm not me, I'll still be me, because there must be a me for me to be me, or is, or is it we? Ha! What chaos! What disorder! Oh, what absolute bedlam. Ah, <sighs> why, such confusion could very well drive a person quite mad. <laughs> ah, Haskell, bring me something to drink. And you, thanks for watching with those lovely eyes of yours. In fact, you know, I just may take those for myself. Ladies, gentlemen, thank you so much for sticking around for the season finale of Elder Scrolls Lore. Special thanks to Wes Johnson and Jeff Baker for their collaboration and support of our fundraising project for charity. Between the two of them, they have voiced more characters in the Elder Scrolls franchise than any two human beings now living, and for that, this series and its creators stand truly humbled. In case you weren't aware, today is World Mental Health Day, a day where we raise global awareness for mental health illnesses like Alzheimer's, which affects over 40 million people worldwide. If you'd like to know more, visit the Alzheimer's Association at alls.org to learn how you can help. The Elder Scrolls universe is chock full of interesting characters, and many of you have expressed your suggestions for future episodes. Presently, our team of test fans that have diligently put over 40 hours of work a week into this series are taking a well-deserved break. I don't know exactly how long we'll be gone for, but I know one thing for certain. When this series eventually returns, I wanted to blow the socks off of the two seasons that came before it. I'm talking about a live-action series like we're currently doing with Fallout lore. I realize this is a tall order, and raising the funds for a project like this will take time, but we're all willing to wait if it means a better show. Many people don't realize this, but Lord doesn't make for a very attractive series on YouTube, and by that I mean most people would much rather watch a Let's Play. As a result, our shows don't get nearly as many views when compared to those other guys, and that sucks. It is your charitable donations that has kept us afloat this long, so with the risk of sounding like a broken record, we thank you again for that. If you wish to continue your study of the Tess universe, I highly recommend you visit the Imperial Library. The books and materials you'll find on these sites is what inspired every episode of Elder Scrolls lore since its inception. Also, don't forget that we have over 40 chapters of Elder Scrolls lore here on the channel, so if you missed any of our earlier episodes, you can find the full playlist down below. Also, you might want to follow us on Facebook and Twitter, where we post updates for anything upcoming. The creators of this show will be meeting to host a live Q&A on Patreon, so if you're one of our third tier donors, keep your eyes peeled for that. Before I leave you all, a few more thoughts. I hope this show will be able to bring the love of lore to a few more people, who otherwise wouldn't have discovered the deep history behind this incredible fantasy setting. I hope in the future it can serve as a highly accessible entry point for fans looking to wrap themselves up in one of the most fleshed out universes in gaming, at least in my opinion. That has always been the primary objective of this series, tracing all the way back to the very first episode. Before I conclude this episode, two years later, 
I'd like to remind you all that this show started with just two brothers and a crappy microphone, proving again that on the internet, if you're a big enough nerd, anything is possible. I've been Josh. Thanks for watching. <laughs>